Hello Year 8 and God bless you. Guys, I hope that you are doing well. So last week, we introduced the cell. We said that the cell is the smallest living thing. In fact, we could think of the cell as the building block of life. Imagine you've got a tower of Lego. If we thought about that tower of Lego as a living thing, such as a human, and we broke that down into its smallest piece of Lego, then that is what the cell represents. Did you know that we are actually made up of about 37 trillion cells? A trillion is a million a million. So when you look at your hand, you're actually looking at about five to 10 trillion cells. That is so small that scientists have created another unit of measurement to be able to talk in those terms. And if you remember from last week, what's it called? It's called a micrometer, and it's a thousandth of a millimeter. So small. There are two types of cells. Hey, Mr. Cowan, can I get your help with something? Mr. Cell. Oh, sorry, are you doing something with the money? No, please, go for it. Oh, um, well, hang on. What are you doing here? Hey, I'll show you, I'm glad you asked. We're talking about cells, and today we're going to start talking about well, what makes up cells, and those are called organelles. Organelles, that's a pretty weird word. What does that mean? It is, it's Latin for small organ. So when we think of the cell, it's actually made up of smaller little organs that have their own purpose, their own function. Organelles. Correct. Okay, you keep pointing to this balloon. What does the balloon have to do with talking about cells? Great question. We can use the balloon as a model of the cell. Okay, tell me about it. What is then this outer light? What's this balloon then represent? Yes, so the balloon itself represents what is called the cell membrane. Let me show you a picture. The cell membrane is made up of two layers and essentially they keep the outside out and the inside in. Their function is to also protect the cell. Okay, you talk about the outside out and the inside in. What's on the inside? What's this stuff on the inside? Yeah, great question. So in terms of this model, the water represents what is called the cytoplasm. Here's another picture. The cytoplasm is this jelly-like substance in which all of the organelles are suspended. Okay. Forgive me for all my questions, Mr. Callan, but what is this? Yes, this streamer represents what is called a flagella, or in singular wording, flagellum. And it effectively whips to propel the cell forward. Not all cells have them, but some cells do. And that's what it is. And that's an organelle. Correct. It is a little part of a cell that serves its own function. Okay. Let me see about this cell here then. Have a look. Hang on, I feel something on the inside. It's, it's kind of large and it's round. What, what is that? Yeah, great question. So, that large object on the inside is called the nucleus. Ah. The nucleus contains the genetic material of the cell, meaning it tells the cell what it's going to become. So is it going to be a brain cell, a hair cell, an eye cell, or even just a skin cell? Okay, all right, so thinking about it, it sounds like you're kind of describing a city, okay? and. From what my understanding of a city is, it needs something to be doing something. So how does it do what it does? Like it knows what to do and what to become, but how does it become that? How does it do that? Great question, Mr. Cell. We can think of the cell as a city. If we thought about the cell membrane, that could be the wall. If we thought about the nucleus, that could be the control center of the city. 
In regards to how does it get anything done? Well, cells have their own organelle and it is called the mitochondria. The mito mitochondria is responsible for converting sugars that we eat, that we obtain from our diet, into energy. The mitochondria is also known as the powerhouse of the cell. Sweet, okay. From what I understand of power, it has waste. It has stuff that it produces and there's, there's gunk. And in a city, you want something to get rid of that. So what happens with a the cell then? Excellent question, Mr. So I'm glad you asked. Like a city, cities have garbage collectors that collect the trash and take it out. Cells also have their own little organelle that serves that very function. And they are called the lysosome. So the lysosome, they go around within the cell and they're almost engulfed. They eat up all that waste, whether that's broken down and decaying material. They break it down into even smaller parts to then excrete outside of the cell. Okay, all right. So you described before two different cells. Which cell is this? Yes. So, so far, we have been talking about an animal cell. There is also another type of cell, and that's the plant cell. Okay. So where, then what's the difference between an animal cell and a plant cell? Yeah, great question. Have you noticed that plants cannot walk? Yes, I have noticed that plants can't walk. <laughs> they cannot move, they cannot go and gather their own food. Like we can. Exactly. So plants need something to be able to allow them to capture their own food. And on that very note, they have what is called the chloroplast. Of course. The chloroplast is responsible for collecting sunlight energy. It absorbs sunlight and converts it into glucose, which is a form of sugar that it can then use as energy. Is that the only difference between a, an animal cell and a plant cell? It's certainly a major difference, but it is not the only one. There is also what is called a cell wall. So humans have skeletons that allows us to keep our posture, our form, and to be upright, to stand. Plants have what is called a cell wall. It is the structure of a cell wall that contains the cell itself to be able to maintain its shape. Okay, so the cell is technically inside of the cell wall. Exactly. Ah, okay. Yeah. All right, so I'm recapping everything in my mind and we've got a plant cell. Yes. We've got an animal cell. Correct. Do we have a human cell? Good question. We said there's two types of cells, hey? So you might be thinking, well, what about humans? Humans have the same cells as animal cells. Ah, so they're the same? Exactly. All right, so I'm th I think I'm getting it. And you're saying if I look outside and I see a plant, that one of the main differences between that and the cells we have in, our, in us is that the plant cell has a tall upright structure because of the cell wall. Yeah, that's it. And it's got the thing inside of it that absorbs sunlight to give it energy. Mm -hmm. That's the chloroplast. An interesting fact, the chloroplast contains this pigment called chlorophyll and chlorophyll actually reflects green light. So when we look at plants, that's the reason why we see them as green. Does that answer your question, Mr. Sapp? Matt, that answers all my questions. I don't think I have any more. Awesome. So next time you guys look at your hands, think, wow, I'm actually looking at trillions of cells in front of me. Can you count them? I've messed up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, God bless you. I hope that you were doing well and we will see you next time.